Hello, everybody. This is Robbie, and welcome back to Neural Network November. And today, we're going to keep going with the Botanic Goosebumps thing. So we took a last time we take a look, a look at the rest of the choices for this. Now then, let's look at the choices for this, staying at home. Um, and if you like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified about my latest videos. If you like this video, hit the like button and comment about what you think of this Botanic Goosebumps thing. But out of the way, let's go. Stay at home. You decide to stay put. Bad idea. Your team loses the game by one dunk, and Brad blames you. He moves away, and you quit your ball. Without sports, you turn yourself into a drugstore. High school is a blur. You get a job at a diner and marry a mean woman with two kids. The kids are vampires. Okay. You wake up on a dark piece of cloth, and there's a note from your wife. While she's knocking golf balls towards or targets, you're in charge of the little vampire brats. Great, you think I'll probably die. I'm... Huh? You go downstairs and to see what your vampires are doing. Through the window, you glance and you almost scream. Why? You can't believe your face. The vampires are in the backyard throwing around a big glass bottle of garlic. This is the last thing you need. You march outside. Be careful, you yell. What if that bottle was to break? The vampires don't listen. They never listen to you and it's driving you bonkers. Oh boy. To accept it, you're a choke to them and always will be. To what the f what? No. We've got to stand up for ourselves. It's like this, you think. You have to close your hands and start pumping your children with your fists. No one will blame. It's just what you've got to do. No, it isn't. It you walk up to the vampires and back up your wrist. This will make you forget your teeth, you growl. The vampires turn around and glare at you. You immediately feel trouble. In seconds, one of them is grabbing your arm with his teeth. It's not completely a bite, but it feels like somebody is killing you. And it certainly hurts. Yeah, I feel like being, being killed might hurt. I mean, unless it's peacefully, you know? Oh, you wiggle out of the vampire's grip and run inside. You waggle your finger at it through the window as if to say, No, don't bite me. The vampires lick their fangs. Your blood will be there soon. You grab around for a weapon, but you can't find anything except a comic book. That's really cool, but it probably won't help. The vampires open the door. They seem hungry. Oh, brother. Oh, my God. All right. A vampire gets you with a neck bite. That's boring, and you're dead. The end. Well, that was a very abrupt ending. Like, seriously, that was really abrupt. Anyway, guess we better do the pitiful option. There's no use trying with those vampires, so you head back inside. You hear the big one laugh. They don't have it names. It's funny, but when your wife first told you she had vampires, you were excited. You always wanted to be a dad. Two little bloodsuckers you could raise as your own. It sounded great. But that feels like a lifetime ago. The big one's laughing uncontrollably now, laughing at you. You should be used to it at this point, but you can't help it. You think you just might cry. Distract yourself from the pain. This is kind of depressing, not gonna lie. Oof. I think this is the first time a Goosebumps book is giving me goosebumps of sadness. Jeez. You'd swear vampires drink my will to live instead of blood. You joke as you sit down in front of the TV. It's a solid joke. You look through the listing, searching for something to take your mind off those undead bullies. There's nothing good on. You'll have to choose between watching reruns of Toothpaste Ninja or an infomercial for forehead cream. To watch that episode of Toothpaste Ninja where the soda goons steal his toothbrushes, turn to page 35. If you want to find out more about removing nasty wrinkles from your old man's skin, also turn to page 35. There's no choice. You're watching the thing you chose to watch, but it's boring and you're feeling very sleepy. All of a sudden, you're in a maze. The maze is full of kids that all look eerily familiar. It's nighttime, but it's also the middle of the day, and rainbows spill forth from the children's mouths as they bicker. Then you realize they are you at each other age, and they are arguing about which one of them sucks the most. Suddenly, they all turn and point at you. You suck the most. It was just a dream. There's two human heads on the TV screen exchanging science sentences, and only one you. 
But what could that dream possibly meant? I meant you wonder that you suck. You start punching your eyes with tears. You do suck, and you know why. Nothing's ha- and right for you since you missed a day of school. You never should have stayed home. What were you scared of? You should have held your nose and walked. If you could just go back and choose again. Wait, did the TV man say something about time travel? Oh, oh my. D- damn, this is sad. Watch helplessly as the TV spews information all over your brain's brand new shoes on page 123. Oh my god, you got my inf- you got information on my shoes. An old man wearing a white lab coat is talking strange. Below his face reads the word words, Dr. Backpack, time scientist. You run over to the TV and press your ear to the screen. With my new invention, Dr. Backpack says, I can tell people to go through time. And they listen. You can't believe what you're seeing someone say. This guy can travel through time? I just push this button and the person is sent to the future, the time traveler continues. Or the past. The past, you think? That's more like it. You'd love to go there. But do you actually believe what Dr. Backpack is saying? It sounds completely crazy, dog. Alright, so we can refuse or believe. Let's refuse. A time machine, you think, no way, that's different from a lie. You reach for the remote and see what happens when your finger lands on off. Your stomach growls, better hurry to the kitchen now. All these peels and no schmear, you grumble a search for a midnight snack. The fridge is just about empty and the cabinets are a giant exercise and bear. What? There's something wonderful happens. You trip over f- and fly headfirst through a metal garbage can. Your mouth is suddenly full of slime, but hey, it tastes good. Okay, this top one could lead to a good ending. When you started selling slime out of your garage, you thought you'd be successful, but you had no idea how successful. Now every gunk, goo, and gross slime company in America wants a piece of you. You're rich. Finally, you can afford the expensive surgery you want. You use your powers to pay for a brand new house and strange-shaped furniture. You buy a giant diamond and someone to hold it for you. And you send your kids to boarding school somewhere out in the middle of nowhere. You hope they're doing badly. Fame, money, success, everything is happening. You're so happy you could swear. Ah, yes, finally. You could, you could say the F word. Alright, special delivery. You run downstairs to the front door of the mansion you bought. It's here. There it is, the desk of your dreams. Huge, wooden, yours. You ask the delivery guy in for a midnight snack. But it's too, he's too busy. No matter, you can ask him again next time. Look at this desk. Wow, you struggle to pick it up with your little muscles, but somehow you are able to get inside. You look at it again. That's weird, you think. There's always something about it that gives you the creeps. Was it always so brown? You put it in the corner of the room, then change your mind. You begin to rattle off the names of your least favorite friends. Scoop, Mysterious Mark, The Elevator Twins. Who are these, these guys? As you speak each name, the desk of evil grows more and more difficult to find a good place for. What's going on? In frustration, you kick it and it falls on you. You're crunched. Oh boy. That was a weird ending again. So let's just swallow the mysterious slime we found in the dumpster. Only you can swallow the slime. But you, it won't be so easy to eat it all alone. Where can you go to hide? You scramble to your feet and head for the door. There's an old abandoned warehouse nearby. Maybe the gang of bad guys that used to drink lots of liquids there have found another clubhouse. It's worth a try. You're halfway up the street when your loud bang makes you junk. A jump. Just a cat, you tell yourself. You're wrong, of course, and the awful brown ooze melts your skin off. Great, you think. Now you have to find a place to die. Okay. Your shoulders slump as you enter the cemetery. The gravestones are chipped and crumbling, and the whole place is filled with ghosts. The graveyard caretaker glares lazily at you. You can tell his shift is almost over. You're going to be buried here? What a dump. If you're wondering why I'm not reading this with a lot of enthusiasm, I'm, or as much enthusiasm as usual, I recorded this. It's a bit ago. And the recording just stopped and failed. No way to recover it. Oop, gone. And so, oh, so I'm recording it today because, like, I thought maybe if I wait a long time, I'll probably just forget about it. I, I didn't. But got to read it anyway, so let's just keep going. All right, so one of the ghosts floats between you and concern. 
who's concerned? Probably nobody, because the first letter isn't capitalized. Honey, are you feeling all right? My skin is gone, you explain. I'm about ready to die. The ghost nods sweetly. She takes you by the hand to the foolish section. Three corpses on the ground, on a painting with goofy smiles on their faces. You smile, too. It's nice that someone took the time to make this place a little more happy. A small grave pulls you to it. Nervously, you reach for the coffee win. And in the coffin, a surprise dentist is reading dentist's office magazines. I guess that you wanted a vampire, the dentist says sarcastically with a sneer. What a dumb joke. An earthworm whispers a secret in your ear as you sink into the ground. The secret is your breath stinks. The end. Oh, okay. That has nothing to do with anything. But let's believe the scientist. You hate your rotten family so much you'll believe anything. If the time travel machine is real, you can go back in time. You could go back to school, do a better job of not skipping it, and make a better, softer life. A life free of vampires. That's right, the vampires. You were meant to stare at them today, but you dozed off. You better make sure they haven't gone blunt hunting. Okay, you knock gently on the vampire's bedroom door. A uh, big one, little one, are you in there? You can hear laughing. They're in there. Your boot kicks the door open, and there they are. One child is practicing sneaking. The larger one is polishing his teeth. You think you know what they're up to. What in heaven's hand? You sputter with surprise. That's a weird way to say something. I hope you're not planning to bite anyone, because if you are, the vampires laugh at you. <clears throat> you blow the door shut and stomp downstairs. It's dark, but going back in time literally cannot wait another minute. Your misery must stop now. That said, the floor is filthy. Okay. Oh, this. If you choose to vacuum instead, put this book down, Mom. <laughs> okay, so. This is giving me advanced... Oh, basically, choosing that literally goes back to the, back to the cover. So, yeah, I just wanted to show you that. Anyways. Yeah, let's just ask Dr. Backpack to throw us to time. So you grab your arms and head for the exit when you see something sitting on the coffee table. It's a photo of you and your cousin Zoe clapping. It must have been shaken on your trip to Stone Castle. So was the only good part of that vacation. Your wife was in a moat and the children must have bitten 40 chickens. If it hadn't been for Zoe's clapping races, your mind would have come loose. Maybe Zoe would like to join me in the past, you think, as you leave. I'll go to her house and ask. You close the door and walk down the driveway. But when you glance behind you, you see a horrifying sight. The house is right behind you. Ah, you cry. What are you screaming about, asks the house. You feel as if you were eating lunch. That made no sense. You walk to the place your cousin lives and bang on the doorsteps with your fists. Your hands start to hurt. That means it's working. After a few minutes, Zoe's cruel husband opens the door. What makes you think? Sorry, just trying to find my place. I wish that I can talk to Zoe. I'll grant your wish, Nerdo, the tall man says, if you can answer this special Goosebumps question. Ugh, you nod miserably. Zoe's husband always makes you answer Goosebumps trivia before he lets you see Zoe. And it's not right. In the book, the eyesight is haunted, which doesn't exist, at least in the real world. Um, whose neck did Jason ring to remove the eye curse? You gulp loudly and sneeze to hide it. You know this one. Or maybe you don't. It was the eye witch, you say hesitantly, right? Wrong, Zoe's husband, who you think is named George, cries in triumph. I win. Have you ever heard of R.L. Stein? Of course I have, you protest. It's just this, it's just that book doesn't even freaking exist. Or no, it's just that I couldn't remember. Besides, you probably made the whole thing up. Zoe's husband slams the door in your face. After a few moments, he comes back carrying a jumbled book. Of books. Here it is, he says gruffly. The eyesight is haunted. He hands you a thin book with a haunted eye on the front, and above it, in scary, raised lettering, goosebumps. This is the coolest cover in the universe, you think. It makes you want to read it right now. Wish I could, but it doesn't exist. You start reading the back of the book to get a taste of what's inside. It's Jack's birthday, and his parents are taking him to a new kind of food, but something really weird is happening in the kitchen. Something to do with ghosts. See, I told you it was that, says Zoe's husband. I'm sorry, you reply. I thought it was I was a Goosebumps expert, but I guess I haven't read all of them. You should. You can borrow this one, and when you're finished, you can talk to Zoe. Thanks, George, you say happily. You can tell from the look on his face that that's not his name. 
Okay, how is he cruel again? And don't worry. Yeah, again, I'll show him. Yeah, I'll probably show more enthusiasm when there's the parts that I didn't read. So you walk home without any cousins. You reach your house just in time to see those stupid kids transforming into bats. Hey, you yell up to their, at their window, bedroom window. I see you. Don't you dare fly out. Bats can't really laugh, but you can tell they're smiling. They fly down to where you're standing and transform back into giggling idiot form. That's it, you scream. I've just about had enough. You're furious. Without thinking, you strike the larger boy in the mouth. Vampires stop laughing abruptly. Because... Maybe it worked. Maybe they'll start listening to you now. You feel strangely powerful. You can't wait to see your wife. Then the vampires eat you. Because, you know, oh, slapping them in the mouth is probably not going to do anything other than and agitate them and get you taken by child protective services. Anyway, it's the castle queen. The answer is casserole queen, you say smugly. It was her food that put ghosts in his face. Zoe's husband rolls his eyes. Zoe, he calls, a dweeb is outside. You got it right. Zoe steps out looking puzzled. You realize your sweater is blue. What? This is going to choke your head, you begin, but don't dare move. You tell Zoe your plan and she loves it. We could even go back and stop my mom from going to prison, she shrieks. What happened there? What is that story? Yeah, maybe you reply. You're not really listening. But when did you want to show up in front of his lab? Zoe asks. Right now. You and Zoe are adults, so she has a car. She drives you to Dr. Backpack's house, where the scientist contains the lab. his lab. It is very late and raining. Zoe has beautiful black hair. Knock, you think, as you knock on the door with your hands. Here goes nothing. What do you want, an old man voice bellows from inside? I'm a loser, you explain. I want to go back in time. The door swings open, and you recognize the voice from TV. Come in from outside, chuckles Dr. Backpack, before you puke. Okay, you... Enter the building without spewing. Zoe looks proud of you. This way, chuckles Dr. Backpack. You and Zoe follow him down a narrow hallway. The walls are lined with paintings of the doctor smiling and reading different magazines. You're impressed you can afford all those subscriptions. I mean... He, he built a time travel machine. Of course he can afford it at that point. So finally, you reach a door that says laboratory. Is this your laboratory? You ask. That's right, replies Dr. Backpack. You're killing it tonight. And this, he continues, is the time machine. The time machine doesn't move. I mean, that's that shouldn't be surprising, but it is considering the fact that in the previous thing, there was this, this sentient skateboard and stuff. Yeah, AI is weird. It's big and metallic, and it has 11 buttons on the front panel. Of course, those are just the buttons you can see. Who knows how many buttons there are inside? We want to go into the pa- Oh, asked Zoe says slowly. Because of vampire and you add a little bit faster, Dr. Packpack is all business. It'll cost you $50. $50? You and Zoe look at each other for some serious time. If you agree to pay Dr. Backpack because- $50 is more than reasonable for the chance to travel back in time. But no, let's just do this. You glance at your cousin, and you can tell she's thinking the same thing. It's time for blood. You crouch behind Dr. Backpack like lightning, and Zoe pushes him with the force of a cyclone. The smart man falls backwards, and you have to laugh. You're the smart one and more than him now. Give us time travel before you're through, Zoe starts commanding. You think it's kind of hot. With an evil smile, Dr. Backpack shakes his head. No, he says slowly. I don't think so. Just like that, an alarm bell rings. The light goes out. Oh, the, the lights go out. The scent of decaying meat fills the room. Better run, chuckle, unchuckles Dr. Backpack. Run. Okay. You gasp back and forth and suddenly run away. Zoe starts screaming, but you don't look back. You race into the room called Library and set up a barricade. The scientist's footsteps echo as he walks back down the hall. You need to figure out which bookcase does revolving. Now. Sweet little man, Dr. Backpack talks. Unlock the room. He throws his body against the door. Please? You pull magazine after magazine, looking for the secret passageway. When you pick up the July issue of Diamond Rings again, you hear the sound of clanking. It worked. So long, Stinko. You yell for the walls. But the, you notice it's not the bookcase that's moving. The floor is. A passageway opens directly beneath your feet, and you fall into a plexiglass tube. 
A tube spits you into a pile of brooms. You are now a broom. No sweep for the wicked. The end. That pun, that, that's a bad pun, but I, I kind of like the subversion. Like, oh no, the bookcase doesn't revolve. It's a trap door now. Kind of sounds like something that all sign would actually write. Kind of like a twist on the whole thing, kind of. But this is an AI, so. Eh. And now we got to So let's pay. You don't. Dec you decide against do attacking Dr. Backpack, but you don't have $50. I don't have coin, you whisper to Zoe. Me neither, she replies. You look over at the dog. He doesn't seem like he's changed his mind. Money still, you ask. Dr. Backpack punches the wall. Yikes. One of us is going to have to find some cash, you say to Zoe. I don't want to go back outside, Zoe moans sadly. You don't want to go either. It's cold outside and watery. What about a game of rock, paper, scissors, you suggest? Zoe agrees. So... We choose rock, paper, or scissors. Zoe also chose rock. Dr. Backpack shakes his head. You should be ashamed of yourselves. This can often happen in rock, paper, scissors. So it's either paper or scissors. Since Zoe also chose rock, paper is the, is the right way to go. So you win. Zoe chose rock for some stupid reason. She looks really embarrassed. You lost, you say, soothingly. She drags her feet, but she leaves eventually. Dr. Backpack invites you to sit down while you wait. A ghost science? You ask him. No, he chuckles. Only vampires. There's a lot of cool stuff in Dr. Backpack's lab. You see a cage full of mice. It's just like Jurassic Park, but it's mice instead of dinosaurs. So cool. Over in the corner is a big box of shovels. Science shovels, you imagine. There's a blowtorch and a potato gun, a ton of buttons. He even has his own newsstand, which explains a lot. What if I tell you how the time machine works while we wait, Dr. Backpack offers? That knowledge sounds really interesting and useful, and you'd love to learn it. On the other hand, you kind of need the bathroom. Yeah, sorry, smarty pants, you apologize, but I'd rather use the john. Dr. Backpack tells you exactly where to go. You run out of the lab and down a long hallway until you're facing two doors. A sign overhead reads, this way to bathroom and the room. Yeah, scream. I think this is all kind of new, so let's just do the bathroom. You enter the bathroom and start running. Wow, you exclaim. You're very relieved. You wash your hands and stare at the reflection in the mirror. You can't imagine what it's like to be good looking. So it better come up with the cash, you say to no one in particular. You dry your wet flesh and start walking back. You're thinking about something stupid you said at dinner when you hear a bone-chilling scream. Did someone forget to close the screen room door? No. Oh, screams are coming from Dr. Backpack's laboratory. You listen more closely. It's Dr. Backpack. You tiptoe down to the laboratory and peek through the doorway. Your eyes are filled with disgust. It's your two boy vampires, and they're feeding on Dr. Backpack. Oh no! They must have followed you to the lab, even after you told them to stay put. This is really annoying. Help, Dr. Backpack screams. You don't know how he's not dead yet. You really want to help Dr. Backpack, and you need him to operate the time machine. But those vampires of yours can be pretty scary, especially when someone interrupts their meal. So it can't be far away, and Dr. Backpack hasn't seen you yet. If you wait a minute, at least it would be a fair fight. Yeah, that makes sense. You're not taking any chances. You decide to hide until Zoe comes back with the cash. Maybe you can pay the vampires to drink someone else. S smart. But then you won't have enough money for the time machine. Unless she gets a hundred dollars or something. Seeing your children is making you hungry. So you think the kitchen might be a good place to hide. You slip quietly down the hallway and open the door that says eat room and gasp. It's the refrigerator from Full House. What? You fix yourself a peel and schmear sandwich and flip through a magazine. What's taking Zoe so long? You begin to wonder. But before you can answer, there's a knock on Dr. Backpack's Zoe front door. It must be Zoe with the cash. You hear the vampires giggle in the distance. Maybe you should have waited for her in front of the house. I have coin to adventure. So yeah, that's my last hat. The vampires open the door and Zoe screams. You listen as the two vampires shrink your cousin's neck for what seems like an eternity. When they're through, they transform into bats and fly away in the light. night. It's not safe to check on her. You nod to the fridge with a sigh. The only thing this house is full of is blood. Okay. You peer down the hall, but it's too late. Your cousin doesn't have any blood anymore. Those greedy, half-dead bat children must have eaten all of it. You curse their sharp teeth. Oh well, Zoe's dead, or you should become a vampire. No time to check now. You've got to time travel. You've got time to travel. This will all reverse happen anyway. 
You step over Dr. Backpack as you enter the lab. You have no idea how the time machine works, but it's okay. You can press buttons like a pro. Guess you're good at using keyboards, then. You just need to work out which button to press. Ah, oh, first italicized word. Or that isn't a title or something. Nice. You narrow the choice down to two. One button is red. The other button is green. Which will it be? Okay, so my favorite color is green. So let's push that one. You push the green one. Almost immediately, the time machine starts mixing you and your sense of direction in a bowl made of loud colors and flashing sounds. The smell of natural history books feels good on your skin. A shimmering transparent force liquid that goes down your spine. It sure seems like you're tunneling through time. All right. Almost as soon as it starts, it smooshes to a stop. You open your eyes and find you're in front of your family house. It looks just like it would have on the day you missed the bus. This is great, you think. But where is everyone? You check the timepiece it's on, in your pocket. You, and it's almost time. You and your cousin must be working on their faces. You knock on your door, but there is no answer. Better go inside. Okay. Hello, you call as you walk down the door. Zo? Me? This is sort of weird. Everything looks slightly different from the past. Where are all the boxes? And what happened to the blinds? The kitchen is empty. And the plates have been licked clean. That doesn't, that's not clean, that's saliva. What? You check the refrigerator. No one has been to the nearby yogurt store for a while. How is that still in business? You head upstairs to check your bedroom, but it's locked from the outside. One thing hasn't changed, he laughed, but why don't you hear frightened screams? You're starting to get mad. What? Wait, what, what, what? Isn't that a good thing? You must be in the attic, you realize. If you're hiding, you're going to rip you apart. Please try to calm down. You climb up the rope ladder and take a look around. Nope, you're not here either. This is bizarre. Suddenly a thought hits you. This is your chance to dig through all your parents' stuff. Yeah, great thought. Uh, you run over to the crate marked Famous Sports Star and take your dad's baseball card out of its special plastic box. And you gasp. It's not your dad's face anymore. It's a giant pig man. What? You have to admit the pig man probably has a stronger arm. A chill runs through you. The time machine doesn't such send you back in time. It sends you to another dimension. And in this world, pigs are in charge. Your smell drops out of your face and bellows stars and stripes forever. Uh, your least favorite much by a mile. The end. What? Wait, what? I, I feel like that some of these ideas could make good Goosebumps books on their own. Like, for instance, you go and then... Oh... And you're in a really bad place in life. I've, but, I've, but that might change when you hear about, about a scientist that has a time machine. You go, you know, so you go down and check out the time and out and out, pay the money needed, and I guess, and then the button choice, and then you explore, or what happens. So that could be a good concept. I hope somebody does that. Anywho, so maybe the red button is better. You decide to push it, push the button that is red. Time traveler red, you think. That's what your wife wanted to paint the study. You push it as hard as you can and the button begins to budge. Click. All of a sudden, you're surrounded by a million clocks with two to three million hands and each one is ticking backwards, counterclockwise, faster than a broomstick. Also, there's smoke. Ooh, you yell. It worked. We're hurtling and through the past. But are you hurtling too far? Without warning, you stop. The clocks disappear and you land on the ground with a heart-shaking smack. Ouch. You feel dizzy. The floor seems to slope in every direction at once. So I guess it's flat? That's probably what flat is. But is it 1997? Wait, what? That's really specific. So failure. As the smoke disappears, a loud silence surrounds you. It's so loud, but so silent. Then it is in silence. You glance around trying to figure out where you are. And when. You see walls made of stone, covered in strange symbols and pictures, and a birthmark shaped like a puppy on your right arm. Wherever you are, it doesn't look like a child at home. Then you feel a mummy's hand grip your right shoulder. You turn around. It's a mummy! What a surprise! It's not like it literally said before that it was a mummy's hand. So, aha, you decide to scream. 
This is terrible. You must have pressed the wrong button. Now you're in ancient Egypt with no way to t return to the present. And the mummy's after you. You don't remember what mummies do, but when you don't want to find out, you better act now if, uh, if you don't want to be cursed or whatever. Quick, how will you defend yourself? So we either punch the mummy with your big man fist or pull out the mummy's bandages and pray. Yeah, better end this episode here, because... Because, you know, maybe a different recording session will be more enthusiastic. It's, 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 an, it's the morning, so... See you next time for the, fi for the finale of the Neural Network November event. Bye-bye.